Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Unstable Tachycardia. Tachycardia is when the heart rate or rhythm is too fast at over 100 beats per minute. An increased heart rate causes less blood to be pumped through the systemic and pulmonary systems. This results in low blood flow, which will cause less oxygen to the flow of the heart and brain. A reduced amount of oxygen flowing to the heart can lead to ischemia and myocardial infarction or a heart attack. There are two types of tachycardia, stable and unstable. Unstable tachycardia is when the heart rate is so fast it causes unstable conditions and symptoms, resulting from a heartbeat of over 150 BPM. Some symptoms of unstable tachycardia may include hypotension, an altered mental state, shock, chest pain or discomfort, and acute heart failure. Now let's look at the rhythms associated with unstable tachycardia. The first is atrial fibrillation, which is when the heartbeats do not occur at the same intervals. It is known as a quivering of the muscles and involves both atria of the heart. Another rhythm is atrial flutter. This is an abnormal heart rhythm causing a fast and irregular heartbeat. Atrial flutter starts in the atrium and it can lead to atrial fibrillation. It usually has a saw-toothed appearance on the ECG. Supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT, is a rapid and narrow heartbeat that starts in the atria, or AV node. Monomorphic VT is a heart rate of over 150 BPM, or beats per minute, but all QRS complexes look the same. Polymorphic VT is when different areas in the ventricles fire fast, uncoordinated impulses. The final rhythm that is frequently associated with tachycardia is wide complex tachycardia of uncertain type. This is due to ventricular tachycardia or SVT with the wide QRS complex of at least 0.12 seconds. Let's consider a relevant scenario. A 45 year old patient arrives at the hospital with chest pain and palpitations. As the nurse is obtaining their medical history and checking vital signs, the patient faints for a few minutes. First, assess the situation. Check the patient for responsiveness by tapping and shouting, are you all right? Look at their chest for any movement. When you check the carotid pulse, you note that there is a pulse and the patient is breathing. You then hook the patient up to a monitor and identify tachycardia when you see the heartbeat as over 100 beats per minute. Now, call the doctor on duty. Start with interventions. Maintain the patient's airway. Help with breathing and give oxygen if the patient is hypoxemic and monitor their oxygen saturation. Monitor blood pressure and heart rate and conduct a 12-lead ECG and diagnose the patient. Check for persistent tachyarrhythmia. For management of the patient, if persistent tachyarrhythmia has been diagnosed, you need to initiate synchronized cardioversion in the following doses, depending on the diagnosis classification. For narrow regular, apply 50 to 100 joules. For narrow irregular, apply 120 to 200 joules biphasic and 200 joules monophasic. For wide regular, apply 100 joules, and for wide irregular, apply the defibrillation dose. Administer adenosine via IV axis with the first dose of 6 mg rapid IV push and a normal saline flush. Administer a second dose of 12 mg of adenosine. If persistent tachyarrhythmia is not found to be present, and if the wide QRS is 12 seconds or more, then obtain IV axis and get a 12-lead ECG. Administer adenosine if monomorphic tachycardia is diagnosed. Administer an antiarrhythmic infusion of procainamide, amirodarone, or sotalol. For more information on the doses of each, please refer to the section on antiarrhythmic infusion doses in this chapter. 
If it is found not to be wide QRS tachycardia, then consider vagal maneuvers, adenosine, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. To see the algorithm showing the management of unstable tachycardia in detail, please refer to the chart in this chapter. Now, let's talk about cardioversion. Synchronized cardioversion is used during unstable tachycardia, but there may be times when unsynchronized cardioversion will need to be used. Synchronized cardioversion should be used with unstable SVT, unstable atrial fibrillation, unstable atrial flutter, and unstable regular monomorphic tachycardia with the pulse. Unsynchronized cardioversion should be used when there is no pulse, when there are critical issues. For example, the patient is going into cardiac arrest, when the patient is in monomorphic or polymorphic VT, or when the patient is at risk of going into arrest. For the energy and joules that should be used during cardioversion for each rhythm, please see the corresponding chart in this chapter. Now, let's walk through the steps of how to give synchronized cardioversion. Anesthetize the patient unless they are crashing or unstable. Turn on the defibrillator. Put the leads on the patient and ensure the rhythm is displayed on the monitor. Connect the adhesive electropads to the patient. Push the sync button to get to the synchronized mode. Ensure the markers are on the R wave as this shows that the sync mode is on. Pick the correct energy level. Ensure everyone present is clear and not touching the patient. Say, stand clear, charging defibrillator. Push the charge button. Clear the patient and say, everyone clear. Push the shock button. Check the patient's rhythm to see if tachycardia is still present. If tachycardia is persistent, then you will need to increase the energy level slowly. Press the sync button again to activate the sync mode and you may repeat as necessary. This was the chapter on unstable tachycardia. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.